Sidekicks is brought to you by Pace Setter Soccer Club. Soccer excellence since 1980. District soccer draw quickly approaching, and we are here to break it down for you as we're joined, as always, on Sidekicks by Danny Fisher, the executive director of Sidekicks, and Chris Black, our BCSN soccer aficionado. Guys, we, we've been talking about this all season long. When it comes to soccer in Northwest Ohio, Anthony Wayne, boys and girls, are going to be the top seeds when it comes time for Sunday's draw. There's no reason to think that's going to change now. So my question is, who will be the two and three seeds? Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, that's... You know, maybe they get stuck in traffic. They don't show up. They're the last <laughs> seed. They blow up the whole bracket for everybody. Uh, but no, yeah, I think that's going to be the big question, especially with some results um, just this past week. Um, Anthony Wayne distanced themselves from St. John's with that 5-2 defeat. Obviously, on the St. John's side, that, that might kick St. John's down to three or four. So that really changes things up a little bit. So you think about where that's at with them. What happens with Northview Perrysburg on the guy's side this week? That'll be kind of exciting on the guy's side. Um, but beyond that, I mean, yeah, number one set. <laughs> We find out tonight that Zach Mocha, Anthony Wayne's star, he has verbaled to play soccer at Duquesne. And Danny, how does Zach's game, how do you think it's going to translate to the college game? Uh, I mean, Zach, Zach's a, a wonderful player. We've seen him score goals at the high school level, at, at the club level as well, at the highest level, at, at the club level as well. So um, I think he'll fit in quite nicely with, with Duquesne. I, I know the coaching staff down there. Zach's very familiar with, with Adam Mitchell down there as well, who, who used to be one of our coaches at Paysetter and at Tiffin as well. Um, Zach's going to fit in very well there. It's like anything when you go in as a freshman. You know, it's always tough. You get into a different environment. It is away from home, but he's technically very good. He, he makes good runs. And the big thing with Zach is he can score goals. So and he's willing to get better. I mean, I think it's a, it's a great pickup for Duquesne and a great choice of school for, for Zach. Chris, as we get into the postseason, there's a possibility to have some lopsided scores because we might have some bad matchups. Now, we see these lopsided scores all the time. Who's to blame when a score gets out of hand? Is it the winning coach or the losing coach that needs to say, we're going to back off at this point? You know, it, it's a tough question because it really is what, is, what are both those teams trying to get out of that game? Obviously, you're trying to win the game, move on. So are you really trying to win that game so badly that you have to put a team together and you can't stop them scoring 27 goals, 26 goals? I, fair enough, no, no. But... That being said, if you are the top level coach coming in with the top level team, you're going in hopefully with a game plan of one, winning the game, two, protecting your players from injuries, uh, three, getting better somehow, getting something out of that game besides just knocking the ball around. So can you manage that game through, through the whole or all phases of that game, uh, get your win, get your stutters out, you know, get it going, let some kids play. I'm a big fan of playing shorthanded. I think a lot of parents and players hate it, but I play shorthanded. I think we've gone down to actually seven in a game before uh, in a tournament. Um, we've not rostered studs before. We've just take, that's it. You're not playing today. You don't need to. Stay safe. Uh, but at the same point, uh, we had a situation where we had a JV kid. We're playing with seven kids. She didn't realize we'd been done scoring for a while. She scored a 10th goal. The opposing coach staff started yelling at me. Um, you know, didn't want to embarrass the kid. That's not fair to her. She just wanted to score a goal. So it's all about, yeah, who, if you score 25 goals and you did everything right to get there, it is what it is. But at the same point, coaches, if you're getting blown out, stop playing a high line defensive offside trap because there's nowhere to hide because then it just looks like bad finishing. I mean, you have to at least try to play, get numbers in behind the ball. Danny, what's coming up for Pace Sutter this week? Uh, we, got our, we had our, last, our first ECNL weekend last weekend. We've got our second ECNL weekend coming up this weekend. Um, plenty of games down at Pace Setter Park as well. So plenty going on at the club and uh, as we get into the uh, towards the end of the fall season. All right. Thank you very much, Chris and Danny. As we've got the district draw coming up on Sunday, still some regular season soccer to be played before that postseason gets underway. But things are getting exciting and interesting in the world of soccer. <laughs> 